evening and I welcome you all on today's session. Uh, today's session is all about oil and gas industry. Uh, oil and gas sector is one of the most. Uh, 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 plays a crucial role in the decision making of uh, the Indian economy. Indian growth uh, is very closely related to energy demand. The need for oil and gas. By uh, uh, there is lots and lots of uh, investment which is going to happen in this sector. Uh, the government is also uh, adopting so, so many uh, policies uh, to increase the demand of the sector, and they have already allowed uh, FDI uh, in this sector, including natural gas, petroleum products, refinery, among, among others. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it is attracting the attention of uh, industries, uh, domestic as well as foreign investment. Uh, to talk more about oil and gas sector and the various career opportunities available in this sector and why it's, it is a myth that this sector will finish in near future. I welcome our guests and expert speaker Dr. B.S. Nigi and Professor Anirudh Singh. Uh, I'm your host today, uh, uh, myself Karthik Arora. Uh, I am working with Edology as a product uh, director, assistant product director. Uh, Edology is a global tech brand uh, 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 which is com coming up uh, with uh, various uh, uh, cutting edge courses uh, on technology and other areas which will actually help you in uh, fast track your career in association with uh, industry and academia. And today's webinar is in association with UPS industry uh, to talk about uh, our guest today. Dr. B.S. Negi is a PhD in shale and gas and chartered in engineer with more than 46 years of experience in the areas of process uh, industry, natural gas value chain, oil and gas regulatory board. He has been active member of Indian team negotiating Iran India pipeline, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India pipeline, Myanmar Indian pipeline and LNG sourcing from across the world. If I talk about Professor Anirudh Singh, he is a professor and course coordinator for MBN oil and gas management with University of uh, uh, Petroleum and Energy Studies, Dehradun. Uh, professor Anirudh, uh, now I hand over the mic to you uh, to take us through uh, the today's session. Thank you so much, Dr. Anirudh. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, good evening, everyone. And I welcome on the behalf of the Edology and the UPS uh, for this webinar. And uh, you guys uh, provide me or provide us the crucial time for us. Uh, today topic is basically uh, it's a myth that the petroleum sector will finish in near future. The reason for that uh, particularly because now the days the experts or maybe the professionals or maybe the freshers or maybe the guys who are having some background and looking after for the sector particularly in oil and gas they think about the future with very few uh, ideas particularly. They didn't know that what will be the future because nowadays the different different opportunities will be there. Somebody is looking after that electric vehicles are coming. What will be the future for the, uh, the fuels which are coming from the uh, petroleum like petrol, diesel, CNG and auto LPG. So these types of things uh, are basically in the mind. And then similarly, the guys who are basically looking after for the opportunities or looking after for uh, to build up their career in the uh, this particular field so they are little bit dicey means are we going for that or are we not so that's why uh, we will start uh, this particular presentation first of all and before the presentation i may invite uh, dr bs negi that please uh, have some words with these guys and with these bright managers or bright uh, uh, colleagues or maybe you can mention the professionals who are basically looking after for the career prospects in the petroleum sector for the near future. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, host of the day, Karthik Roda and the participants. Very good evening. I think it's my uh, pleasure and privilege to be with you on this very uh, important topic today. That is, it's the myth that petroleum sector will finish in near future. Uh, let me uh, say that it is a statement 
of intent. Let's see. And we'll examine, I mean, in, in a very short way, examine whether it's really a myth or it's a truth, what happens actually. Now, there are two aspects of this uh, statement or this petroleum sector. One is that if the resource vanish, petroleum resources, energy resources on petroleum, if they vanish, could be yes, then it could be a myth that it, will, uh, it may not uh, sustain more. Secondly, whether used wise, uh, whether the uses of uh, petroleum products is going to uh, vanish or is going to finish in your future, these two aspects. So let me first examine with respect to the availability of uh, petroleum resources. I put in a broader perspect of, let's say, uh, fossil fuels, they are petroleum products. So oil, gas, and coal, if you see these three elements or these three uh, natural resources, oil uh, as of now it will last for another i think more than uh, 54 years to come with the present day of consumption rate oil secondly the gas which will also touch almost 40, 50 or 49 years rnp ratio we call it and coal is more than 140 years or 139 years so in so far as the availability of uh, these product is concerned uh, there is no depth so so th then we, the statement is remains a myth with respect to availability or say production or uh, uh, resource wise. And well, let me tell you one, whatever figure I have told you or you are seeing in the, any of the statement or any of the study, uh, that may be myth because uh, the, the, the resources are every day changed because new exploration is taking place, new exploitation is taking place. I, I, I recollect one of the study was conducted by uh, Shell, uh, at the time in 1970 it was uh, then it concluded that yes uh, our at least gas resource will vanish by 2000 surprisingly when 2000 came the total available uh, gas resource was more than what it was in 1990 so with respect to uh, availability of these resources i want to assure you that the whatever uh, volume so whatever quantity is available it will be more than that uh, in the near future so this aspect is uh, uh, it is not allowing that it will be a myth. It, it will not be uh, a myth. It will be a uh, it will be a myth certainly. The second aspect will be the consumption wise. Now, the petroleum sector is basically energy sector. It provides a very concentrated uh, energy. So uh, energy is required for sustaining the present lifestyle. Very essential. Whatever we want our day to day, right from morning, getting up to evening or even night. We need light, we need energy for anything, cooking, heating, lighting, air conditioner, vehicles even. So uh, to maintain that present lifestyle and also to improve it, a lot of improvements are taking place. So this energy resource is very essential and it reflects in terms of primary energy. If you see the primary energy is going to increase in any study. I was just referring to a uh, world study. Uh, IEA has given that, let me refer to. They say the uh, word energy, primary energy will uh, increase 2.6 to 3.1% year on year based on the scenario uh, from uh, 2019 to 2040. And in Indian context, it is still more because we are still a developing uh, country and developing economy. Our rate will be about 4.9 to 6%. Primary energy. If primary energy increases, what are the constituents of primary energy? It is basically the six major uh, constituents, starting from oil, gas, coal, nuclear, hydro, and renewable. The contribution in energy basket of the world, let's say, of the fossil fuel continues to be 88% in 2019. 88 is, is, a, is, is a very alarming figure. So therefore, there are a lot many environmental uh, group, COP26 and other things which have come up, we can discuss later on. But in India also, in 2019, in 20 also, 20 remains sustained, it was because of COVID, but uh, the, the contribution of oil, gas, and coal to Indian primary energy has been 79.75, you can say 80%, almost. So these three uh, petroleum products. Then in 2030, I made a study actually, thinking that uh, India has uh, you know, commissioned a gas-based economy. We have also had that uh, LNG policy, we also have that uh, renewables 40% of power generation. These three very driving factors for clean energy and environmental conservation. 
so i thought let me use how much possibility in india is there to uh, actually achieve uh, the, the the contribution of various uh, energy resource in that scenario also two things came up in fossil fuel the most environmental friendly fuel is the gas natural gas india wants 15% of natural gas to have share in 2030 my study says that it is impossible with the present uh, kind of uh, investment and present kind of infrastructure in india the maximum which can go by 2030 is 11.9% that is a study very rigorous study was made it will be coming up in some paper also so in net cell the total contribution of petroleum products that is oil gas and uh, coal not product only is resources total for uh, indian economy was 73.18 hardly reduction of about 6% so these product will continue uh, to last but now the challenge which comes up i know why this particular uh, statement has been uh, fleshed up to to discuss today because of the environmental consideration the environmental consideration the coal is the worst possible fossil fuel uh, for uh, co2 emissions and lot of other uh, bad effects in environment followed by uh, oil and followed by gas gas is actually benign fuel but not as good as the renewables and other things so this this is a basic uh, thrust which now people feel but having said so even with this consideration my point will be it will not be possible for the clean energy resources like hydro uh, wind solar and to some extent let's say nuclear they will not be able to cope up uh, when we say the uh, power sector which is the major consumer of primary energy about 50 to 60% depending on the country it goes on power sector and in india it is almost 60 and 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 if you go by the government statement which is possible i have full faith because the kind of push in government of india is giving we can achieve almost let's say a 40% uh, contribution of the renewables in power generation so 40 into 60 makes 24% now only 24% contribution from renewables and uh, eco friendly fuel in the best scenario then what happens to remaining uh, portion of the energy so it is basically again fossil fuel but the as you will see in the natural course environmental consideration like you no know, you have the kyoto protocol you have the paris declaration you have now the cop 26 declaration uh, the the phasing out of the environmentally polluting fuel like coal will take place certainly and there will be some uh, new uh, technologies coming up let's say Uh, clean coal technology and also that uh, carbon sequestration technologies so there th there there will be improvement in the in the process of utilization of this uh, fuel uh, in, if you see even the percentage growth uh, there was some study conducted by uh, bp they say if the 19 2018 is a base then what will be the uh, impact in 2050 because now a lot of jugglery has come up in uh, net zero process and we can take up later on in question answer session net zero he said the non fossil fuel that is renewables will go positive ride of 30% but it is misnormous again one has to be careful the 30% of the present consumption if you see indian context they are very minuscule actually the nuclear is 1.25% hydro is 4.53 and renewable is 4.49 even if they go 30% more it does not matter in quantitative conversion so we we have to analyze the situation with respect to actual realities on ground secondly the natural gas 5% increase globally in india we feel almost two and a half times and coal will re reduce and oil will reduce respectively 25% to 10% so that means that the the volume of these uh, two uh, petroleum resources oil and coal will reduce from the present consumption but overall energy basket they will have the major role now with this uh, i will uh, i will i will say that the statement it's a myth that petroleum sector self will vanish in near future is a myth in, in in my conclusion now if it is not then things will come otherwise now with this now this sector gives you great opportunities i mean at least the study say that in 50 years 2050 nothing will happen you will, you will have to have a progressive uh, use of uh, 
oil products, but only thing is you have to have the clean technologies. Like upstream, uh, if, if you reduce that oil production, the gas will increase. That's what the people want now. The CBM, shale gas, and also uh, gas hydrates. Uh, only thing, if you, if you can produce these with a less uh, methane emissions, that is a technological requirement. That's what's the opportunity. How to really handle upstream where the emissions or release of uh, methane should reduce in the atmosphere. This is what is very important. Then we have the transportation, another sector where a lot of opportunities do have. Uh, that is, uh, today, if you, if you see Indian context, most of us are from India. Uh, Indian context, we have about almost 11,000 kilometers of uh, crude oil pipelines owned by PSUs and uh, private companies, and about 18,000 kilometers of uh, natural gas pipeline. This natural gas pipeline is going to increase to almost 30,000 by 2025-26, and things are in progress. So very big, uh, important. Refining is another area where you can really help protect the environment and produce good with the efficiency. Now, gas usage in refinery is giving you good products, and you are going to Euro 6 grade of uh, petroleum products uh, like um, diesel and uh, petrol being produced. And you have the petrochemicals. The petrochemicals are so spread in our life, starting from clothes, furniture, uh, and, and, and this uh, um, high engineering goods. Uh, the, the, the petrochemicals are another areas where very, very important uh, career opportunities do come. Then we have LNG, very clean, 100% almost methane. And uh, the, the people can source this energy from anywhere in the world, uh, which are connected by uh, sea route. And today, if you see almost uh, 393 million metric ton of energy production capacity is there, which is going to still increase because Qatar is coming up very fast now. With this, the choice of the people to buy LNG and also to consume LNG in their country is used. Against 393, we have 424 million metric ton capacity of uh, regasification. As India, we see we have almost five plants, and the LNG contribution in the natural gas sector has exceeded the domestic gas production. More uh, use of net, uh, LNG and less use of natural gas because availability is less. And government has given very big priority to LNG. They have said, all along the highways or anywhere, you can dispense LNG for transport sector. That means the trucks and buses and other big vehicles. And there is open license. There is no need of applying for any concession. You can just establish. So that is a big thrust going for LNG. Good market area, very nice uh, prospects. And power sector is, is, is another attractive areas where we have to have the a challenge of increasing the efficiency. I mean, my thrust will be, if you see the gas uses, why the uh, people are concerned about environment? Because we are not properly utilizing the energy resources. The best uh, heat rate today power plant is about 1600 kilocalorie per unit against the exact transformation of 860. 860 required, and we are using 1600, the best one. So where does this particular gap goes? Goes to environment. So this is what to be reduced. How efficiency, power generation is another challenge we should meet. Then comes the CGD. Uh, Gas-based economy, the government thrust, uh, when they discussed, it was the city gas distribution sector, which is the maximum utilization sector of the natural gas. Whatever today is being in about 50 million meter cube, we are going for almost three times. The three times appetite for CGD is very, very big challenge. And as of today, we have about 238 areas which are using CGD and about 41 entities are operating. And in the latest concluded round now, we have about 61 authorization going on very soon. They have already given LOI for many of the um, CGD um, areas. So this is very, very challenging task, very, very emerging career prospects in CGD. Then you have uh, gas trading, another interesting area. R&D. Now, if you, if you really say, I, my, my supporting uh, thing for uh, this statement is, uh, people have started, like IIT Kanpur, they have started research, how to increase the efficiency of the IC engines. And I was talking to uh, Professor Agrawal, he said that we, the people will be loving to use these kind of new vehicles, they are turbocharged, high efficiency vehicles. So the, the, the research is going on. So 
no matter we may have you know challenges from uh, e vehicles from hydrogen they will have their own share and we must encourage them i mean we are not against them but in nutshell the total contribution of petroleum sector will will lead the total energy sector of the world this is for sure so now with this uh, i i i again thank you we will be uh, looking for any question answer after the presentation of professor anirudh ji uh, thanks a lot to all of you thank you sir thank you thanks uh, for your uh, the points which i uh, shared by you and specifically the latest uh, points related to the cgd business and the natural gas business because maximum of us are basically looking after for the part of the oil means crude oil and then the processing and all those things but if we discuss particularly the natural gas which is uh, now the days uh, the methanol uh, the government of india as well as the worldwide we are looking after for that particular technology so the economy which is uh, looking after very soon that one is ethanol based and another is methanol based so methanol based economy will be boom very soon in india also so uh, thank you sir thanks for uh, sharing those things so i am just looking after for that particular outline which is basically you will understand what's happened in that particular oil and gas sector or maybe the petroleum sector in last 100 year second the art of forecasting means the bp uh, journals as well as the shell journals or ia mentioned that what will be the scenario for next 25 years and then we will mention that what will be the career prospects what will be the investment prospects and what will be the future for the petroleum sector so very fast i am looking after for that if we discuss about the last 100 year that the scenario that the first question which we ask with us that 1921 what will be the industry would like in 2021 so we will look after there is basically the one thing that is basically the technological development okay so from day by day even from the last 100 years and uh, sir also mentioned that the things are changing because earlier we didn't know how much exact oil or how much exact gas is available right now because uh, some of uh, us are basically doing the seismic study the consultants are doing those things and the big organizations are doing those things but that is basically the technological development so in uh, from if we discuss from the 1925 there is a beam pump second in 1927 first electric is in well then 29 surface then 31 introduction of the uh, potential sp logs and then core analysis 46 computer uh, and then you are also looking after these types of uh, slumberger build up these types of electric logs and then the first uh, which uh, we are looking after over here is basically 1925 which is basically the first uh, graph uh, diagram which you will looking after now the days which is uh, basically uh, as the well we are uh, uh, using now the days and then offshore drilling will be started in 1949 1954 jacob drills are there similarly the us already mentioned the peak oil theory came in 1964 at that time that uh, the us already mentioned that their export is growing its export is down and they from after 1964 they are becoming the number one importer but after the technological development if we discussed in 2018 there is again a technological development and that is basically the boom or maybe you can mention oil boom that is shale gas shale gas or shale oil so us again after 2008 18 become the uh, exporter and they are the biggest uh, supplier of the oil and gas again after this fracking process so why we are mentioning that there is a technological development is going on this particular sector in last uh, few decades also and in continuous basis the scenario will be changes and not only for the petroleum sector with that particular related subjects like automobile industry like if you are looking after for the uh, fertilizers if you are looking after for the plastics if you are looking after for the uh, the paint industry if you are looking for the uh, adhesive industry all these are basically the petrochemical products even the fmcg sector also so these sectors are basically related directly to the fmcg uh, related to the petroleum sector and these sector will be uh, and for long so 
the petroleum sector which will be uh, in the form of mineral oils or in the form of uh, the gases which will be there for a longer period of time yes uh, sir has also mentioned that uh, the now that is the co2 emission norms and the organizations as well as the world uh, organizations are looking after for the Paris 2020, if we discuss about those things that IA is also mentioning, they are also concerned. But the impact for this is mostly on the coal because right now the scenario for the coal is almost 68% and the reduction if the first target is reduction of the coal. So if we discuss about the petroleum sector, yes, there is some change, but not like that. In that particular comparison, if we look after for the emission uh, CO2 emission norms for the energy utilization, so this is business as usual. You are looking after there is a very little drastic change in that particular till 2050. Over there, whereas in some figures, the oil consumption, if we're looking after the, this is basically the BP 2020 uh, scenario, which is basically mentioned over there. Oil consumption is basically on a stagnant position. It reducing, but not in a bigger, uh, bigger volumes. Similarly, if you are thinking that uh, the other ones means if you are thinking for the uh, other one, the natural gas is basically increasing. OK, so this is the best uh, bad thing we will looking after. And similarly, we look after the outlook of the renewables over here. The percentage of the renewables or the percentage of the solar is increasing, but not like that. They are basically the parallel thing. They are not basically reducing the other things. They are basically the parallel thing because our energy demand is growing in such a way that we want to fulfill these energy demand with all type of sources, renewable as well as non-renewable. So same thing we have to discuss about the natural gas so already mentioned for that, that we are increasing for that because in uh, if we've discussed about the uh, emissions, then the best source is not only the solar, not only the renewables, they are basically in the petroleum sector is basically the natural gas. So in natural gas, we will look after in that particular comparison. If we look after for the wind and solar, yes, sometime the scenario will be on higher side, but after the maturity, they will reduce very soon. OK, so that type of scenario will be there for that. But electricity demand is going up and up because the population of the world is going up and up. So that's why the electricity or the energy demand will be going on a higher sector. So that's why we are looking after for the uh, that particular uh, thing that in global oil supply and demand outlook to 2020. So, yes, there is a scenario like COVID 2019 over that we are basically reducing that type of scenario. It's basically any time uh, that type of scenario will hit the mark, hit this particular sector in 2019 onwards. Still, we are basically not expecting that type of demand in, uh, before 2019, which we have because 2020, it's basically very bad for that particular uh, petroleum sector, but it's not for a longer period of time. It will be uh, for shorter period of time. And if you discussed from uh, second half of 2021 or the first half now in 2022, the demand will be growing on upper side. So for the longer period of time, there is a huge investment will be there. And for that particular investment, there will be the chances for the growth in that particular sector. And even not only the technical point of view, not only the guys who are basically from uh, the engineering background or diploma background, or maybe the guys from uh, that particular fit, even from the normal graduates also, the big things are changing over here. If we discussed that the distillation part of the oil and gas, so it will be on a longer period of time. So distillation is basically in all three sectors, means upstream, midstream and downstream. And the benefit for that particular distillation transformation is first of all, if it discussed in the upstream sector, then your productivity will be improved your efficiency will be on higher side. The increased cost saving will be there. High time saving will be there and faster decision making processes will be there in the upstream through that particular digital transformation. Similarly, if we discuss about the midstream sector, then acceleration of the production 
enhance recovery, asset utilization, improve efficiency, and the reduction downtime, capex, and the re regulatory events. And even you can also look after that the basically the bunkers which are basically come under uh, this charting business or the bunkering businesses also grow through that particular digital transformation right now also. And then the downstream sector for the distribution or the retailing sector, the automation process will be there. So that will be the improve the workforce productivity then the HSC performance will also increase uh, through that particularly and reduction in the operating cost throughout improvement and the reduction in the unplanned sh uh, short uh, shut ups. So uh, if we discuss for that particular digital transformation that in all these three sectors it will be growing and uh, it will be beneficial for these three sectors everywhere. Then the challenges. Yes, the challenges for the digital transformation is lack of financial budget and limitation. So please understand there is a huge budget and the huge uh, uh, every organizations or the governments are basically looking after the huge investment for that particular thing. And even if we discuss about the blockchain. So first of all, please understand all the trading which is basically you are looking after right now that like MCX, like IEX, there or maybe uh, in India uh, even also. So uh, for the commodity like gas, commodity like uh, oil, the trading is also going on and that is basically through that uh, particular uh, gas hub is also maintained. So these types of things are also there in the blockchain technologies also implemented with this particular oil and gas sector. Similarly, the complex infrastructure development, yes, because over here, not only the digital transformation, digital transformation also look after for the infrastructure, like civil infrastructure. We can develop that uh, there is a, a software called uh, uh, you can develop for the pipeline infrastructure, but before for developing any software or a mon a monitoring for those pipelines, you want to lay up those pipelines. So for that particular thing, it's a complex process. Then the challenges which will be it's a industry structure. Basically in there are the three sectors in these three sectors. The organizations some are integrated oil and gas company. Some are independent oil and gas company. Some are basically the oil service uh, industries and some are basically the original equipment manufacturer companies. So that's why each and every organization are basically in different basket. So that's why the structure for the petroleum sector is also different and the organizations are looking after they are dependent to each other. OK, so that's why the, that's the reason is change in the industry uh, industry structure particularly and we will look after also the right platform for the digital foundations that uh, from where we will start. So first of all, if we discuss about the downstream sector, that will be the uh, beneficial one and then we will move on to the midstream and then we will move on to the upstream, but it is now that is everywhere. And then lack of IT infrastructure and software expertise because uh, yes, software are developing by the software companies are there, but for the petroleum sector still there is a huge gap for that IT infrastructure and the software expertise uh, with very less or, or you can say that very less organizations are there and even the HSC norms. If we discuss there is a huge scope in that particular workplace and the commitment which we'll be looking after because this is everybody knows that uh, HSC uh, is basically important for this. So that's why the digital transformation is the big beneficial part for that particular thing. Then what's the impact for the Indian transition in renewable energy? So uh, if we discuss that as per the IEA, the present approx 70% of the energy demand in India is fulfilled by two petroleum derivatives, coal almost 44% and oil 25%. So it will be reducing, but not drastically. They are the uh, means after 50 years or after uh, uh, for a longer period of time, you can see that that the percentage is not in double figures. The percentage is in single figures if they will reduce and the changes which is from this particular sector, you will looking after the gas sector will be improving or you can looking after the other option or the refined options uh, which will become from the petroleum sector itself will be there. So yes, the coal is the maximum chunk and that will be the reduction part uh, for that particular thing. Then the fossil fuel sustainability energy systems, if we looking after for the longer period of time, then the future is basically if we discuss in 2019, it is only we mentioned 100.3 that is 
uh, we will looking after over here. But similarly, it will be increasing. Yes, due to the COVID scenario, we are here in 2020. But now it is uh, similarly, you can look after the price is also growing up. Similarly, the demand is also growing up. So it, the volume are basically growing with the OPEC as well as EIA and IEA. All organizations are mentioning that the scenario will be on the global perspective, it will be growing. And the most important part, which we'll be looking after for the conclusion, that there is much of we today have developed within the last 100 years because of the technological changes in the oil and gas sector. Second is, we are hardly imagine what the technology will be there in 2017. Maybe the autonomous vehicles, maybe the drones, maybe the AI, maybe the remote operations, we didn't know. Then various uh, cones of the uncertainty help for the focus of our institutions. That will be the scenario. And then oil and gas will play an important role in the energy supply for the next 25 years. Yes, we will uh, show for that. And this is true whether our support climate change or not. It will be, but as we looking after that from a change from a uh, that from a coal to the natural gas uh, systems, or maybe we will looking after from the petroleum to the natural gas systems, the climate change will be there on a regular basis. And then the carrier in the oil and gas sector, which we are concerned or the investment for the oil and gas sector, there will be for a longer period of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, over to you uh, guys, you can ask any questions or any doubts. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Anirudh. Uh, there are a few questions which are already in the chat window. Uh, so please allow me to ask all those questions on behalf of our uh, guests. So uh, one question uh, which Sajith has posted uh, that currently almost 45 to 55 percent of crude oil is converted to mobility fuel, petrol, diesel, etc., which is expected to decline to 20% by 2050. Even though the consumption will increase in India, China and other developing countries, but then even the total consumption of oil will be declining. Okay. And also as there are no big ONG reserves in India and it imports crude from other countries, which puts a great burden on Forex reserve. Okay. Uh, so I think this it's a long question. So so basically they just want to know uh, as as they, they know that they are saying that it's a basically a declining industry. So do you still recommend uh, uh, this to a 2024 year old child to get into this sector? No, first of all, please understand. I already mentioned this is not a declining industry. The reason is that I recently mentioned there is a two type of uh, 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 maybe uh, you can mention that uh, uh, methane is also there, which is basically uh, we can mention uh, methane is there and second is basically the ethane. So ethanol economy and methanol economy, these are basically related to the petroleum sector. You can't utilize the 100% ethane as a fuel. OK, so for a automobile industry also, automobiles which are basically converting means if you are looking after for the uh, other options, the dual fuel option as well as the biofuel option in both the options you are looking after the uh, drastically change are basically the ethanol one. OK, so up to the target right now, it's 5% to 10%, but up to 25% will be the scenario. But 25%, it doesn't mean that the 100% will be converted from ethanol to uh, means from the petroleum or maybe for the petrol or diesel, it will be changes. No, it is basically you need to blend the things. Yes, we are importing 82% from the crude oil from the other. Uh, 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 that is basically we are the second largest importer. But please understand we are also the refiner. We are the third largest refiner of the world. We are supplying, we are converting that particular crude oil to the different, different products and supply back to the countries which are basically in the form of finished product. Maybe in the form of gasoline, maybe in the form of ATF, maybe in the form of uh, the fertilizers, maybe in the form of naphtha, maybe in the form of finished and semi finished products. So we are the refiners also. So this type of you didn't understand means no upstream sector in oil and gas is basically a part. Yes, but it is very less. 
the maximum part now the days due to this digital dis transformation you will looking after in the downstream as well as in the midstream sector. So if the product will be coming out, if you can find out that shale gas technology to, before 2018, that US is basically the uh, first largest importer. After 2018, after this particular technology, the scenario changes. Now this become the exporter. So please understand the this type of technological changes very soon you will looking after in India. That in KD6 basin, Kaveri basin over there, the ONGC is also looking after for the shale gas uh, over there. Similarly, seven other pockets are also there. So that's why one thing is that. Second is basically the methanol. If we discussed that, what is methane? Methane is basically CH4. CH4 is basically nothing. It's basically the gas, natural gas. So early days before all these things, you know very well that biogas. Biogas is also bio uh, it's basically the methane so now that is the word is coming that bio cng so the biogas which is basically came from the cow dung which is came from the slurry and then you will generate that particular gas now the days the things are basically converting there are the two things are required the compression the compression up to 220 bar and that after that particular compression that uh, C, uh, that cng will be created and then that thing will be also utilized so that's why that's the reason the city gas distribution companies there is a compulsory for that particular cng that if there is a option for that particular bio cng you will utilize first that one okay so this is also a uh, increase uh, if through the bio CNG concepts in Maharashtra or maybe in Uttarakhand also near to the Haridwar, you can find out that now the days guys are converting their biogas plant to the bio CNG plants. So this type of scenario will be there. Very soon you are looking after that type of opportunity will grow and grow drastically in the petroleum sector. Uh, thanks, Professor Anirudh. Hope Shijit, you have got the answer of your question. Uh, Professor, another question is like what kind of job opportunities are available in oil and gas industry? OK, OK, so I already mentioned there is uh, maybe uh, the best suitable uh, person for this is uh, Dr. B.S. Negi because uh, uh, Sir will mention uh, uh, for that particular thing that will be in much better level. I think uh, uh, Dr. Anirudh, yes, I can share. Uh, yeah, see one thing uh, that the previous question was very, very uh, far reaching consequence type question. What will happen to oil actually? Uh, let, I did add on what uh, Dr. Uh, Anil Sal has said. Uh, in my study, which I said uh, with, with the thrust of the Indian government for increasing the share of natural gas and the renewables, the impact on 2030. So that indicated that oil from uh, 2020, 28.2 uh, million ton, which both internal consumption as well as export. Uh, Professor Andrew has said that it, well, we have a huge refining capacity in excess of the consumption. But we have a lot of lack of the, the petroleum, that your oil, oil <coughs> or even meeting our own requirement. So th then in 2030, when the gas uh, increased uh, from 6% uh, to 11.90, as I said, uh, the total uh, oil consumption reduced by about 7.7%. Uh, it came to 26.02. It's calculated, you can wrote down. Uh, it is my calculation, but what will happen, will time will tell. So it, it shows a negative trend of 7.7%. 7, 7 now the question comes again, which are the products coming from oil, which will be used here or may not be used. Let's say you have the product starting from some part of the crude oil will give you gas also. Then you will get LPG, you, it's, it's in high demand, then no problem. Then petrol, diesel, ATF, low oil, and your bitumen. And coke. So the, the, the product slate from refining, if the consumption in let's say uh, HSD sector goes down, and so is the petrol sector replacing by e vehicle as well as by uh, CNG, yes, there will be impact. So accordingly, they will have to uh, shape themselves. Second point, when, when I was going through some paper, you say uh, the, the, the real player in oil production will continue and the uh, I will not use the word novice, but the people who have a different slate, like ExxonMobil or even uh, um, the other big player, Shell, uh, they will be discontinuing production of oil. That their study says, and OPEC will reduce the price. 
this is one 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 issue is very interesting but in 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 any context uh, it, it is it is going to have a, a play but maybe not that high but there will be challenges second the opportunities opportunity i said you start from uh, upstream which, which i was uh, deliberating upstream you have 2d survey 3d survey you have exploration exploitations and production uh, systemic uh, analysis man i mean digitization in in upas itself i was going through one of the paper one presenter came from outside uh, they have the you know a virtual well drilling process without actually drilling well you can you can have the uh, 2d 3d modeling and see uh, what is happening inside don't spend about uh, 35 crores in a well and you you spent only uh, two two crores in uh, virtual modeling so it's a lot of challenge then i said in the middle sector of transportation huge i think is a high demand people are not available in fact uh, in in transportation sector lng lng and, and one of the challenge which i am throwing to many of the um, uh, listener let's say uh, now in the new context the government has uh, I mean, is being is authorizing now uh, city gas distribution in the hilly state of uttarakhand nine districts remain from champavat or the pithoragar then you have bageswar almoda uh, the chamoli from this side you have got uh, teri gadwal podi gadwal uh, rudraprayag and uttarkashi can you imagine now uh, dear participants how the gas supply will take place there cannot be a pipeline steel pipeline in this area it's impossible yes. really seismically fragile area so it's a challenge i mean let us share the challenge how to meet the requirement and then people have bid and they have been awarded being awarded now so it's a new challenge will come in any sector uh, yes. similarly you have uh, i was just noting down a few more which are very important let's say how to really create high efficiency process even even refining gas processing lng formation even lng has to be now in a mini scale plant any investor of you those who are interested in micro lng or mini lng plant which cost may be around 30 to 40 crores rupees you can liquefy the gas at nearest location and get, take it to the hillside now this is one solution clue i'm giving you it's a new technology so how how to really cope up that means efficient process efficient equipment so energy as i was telling how to increase the efficiency of the equipment we have that uh, new grading Uh, by oil conservation uh, group so that that is another thing then clean technology uh, even uh, uh, you have seen that last time there was a lot of uh, scarcity of uh, coal and then the, and then then the clean coal technology washer is near the pit head a lot of thing uh, the, the presentation told you i think there is 16 7 there is one more uh, uh, pro, uh, work what you call this webinar by energy environmental foundation on petrocoal the the most thrust is given to the clean coal technologies very interesting h2 everybody says h2 i mean in, in one of the seminar i was just discussing uh, although uh, the, the best source of creating uh, h2 will be from water electrolysis but people go for even uh, coal to h2 um, um, and also natural gas to h2 this is a new process we call it blue hydrogen because natural gas as usually is better than even using hydrogen from natural gas i mean then then you people have to really study pros and cons then tell about yes look here gentlemen this is the right process then you have uh, green uh, lng new new technology <laughs> i was going through the texas lng last time we had a seminar uh, professor you were also there uh, there was a speaker which of indian origin heading that texas lng he says we have got green lng i said what is green lng he says we are not using any methane we are producing lng but <laughs> state by using electricity and other thing so i mean such a drastic new things are coming up for the challenge in this oil and gas sector lot of opportunity then uh, then you have got the uh, digitization as as uh, uh, professor andrew sab has uh, already uh, taken up blockchain a new concept digital twin i mean you, you, that if you want to have the health monitoring of any of the equipment uh, mostly rotating the digital twin is a new concept now you you can really start that even the new startup can do that then you have smart meters you need not to go for meter reading in new concept people have started many startups have come others uh, then you have uh, consumer care by digitization and uh, new 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 process or new uh, application software for removing the queuing the, the the most retarding process for cng application in india is the waiting time so if you have a apps that you book your time 
you say at this slot i'm okay and the app says yes you are okay you go at the time fill up within 10 minutes and come back so th these is small thing were very very important uh, then opportunities you have got uh, i was covering lng then cgd most important uh, career, career opportunities and today uh, there are a lot of funds foreign funds coming i square very high use fund uh, osaka gas they are giving use funds so it is a very big actually uh, you just can't complete it uh, but i mean in the short upstream midstream downstream lng all opportunities and people go for manufacturing even today the situation is so bad uh, the, the the delivery time of the equipment is, is now ranging more than one year so more buyer less supplier so let us start up if anybody has specific issues we can tell them what to make actually in india that there is no doubt this is one of the best sector not that uh, i have been pursuing my career but it is uh, really uh, really really uh, sector where you have got career opportunities and you will enjoy it okay yeah. thank you thank you dr nigi uh, for this elaborate answer another question is uh, which is more efficient fuel ethanol or methanol and how india can increase its production and become a leading exporter okay uh, so uh, i'll just mention about uh, that particular thing so please understand uh, as a ethanol we have the opportunity because everybody knows ethanol is from the uh, nature like sugarcane industry is provider for that particular ethanol but the thing is the consumption of ethanol is basically more in the spirits in comparison to the petroleum sector government of india or maybe the petroleum companies didn't have the ethanol right now because maximum of the uh, these uh, sugar industry are supplying they have own distilleries they are basic because if you take a normal business if i am just mentioning you the price of a petrol is maximum to maximum 95 to 100 rupees in some states whereas if we discuss about the spread the price of that particular thing is minimum to minimum 300 rupees and the maximum ethanol part is basically looking after for that particular thing so that's the basic problem in that particular thing to meet the target of 10% even we are just lagging over there yes for the methanol part we are basically doing through that particular thing because i already give an example of the bio cng which is basically from the biogas you can do that particular or you can meet for that particular thing so it's not only the efficient fuel but the thing is the availability of the fuel ethanol is less whereas the methanol is on a higher side Uh, taking a uh, clue from your uh, talk uh, professor yeah. uh, riru ji uh, this bio uh, gas uh, th this this particular sector will be really helping the environment if you do not uh, produce bio gas from either the animal dung or from the uh, waste to energy process you are actually emitting this uh, methane in the atmosphere which is as many as i think 20 times more dangerous than the co2 itself so my my challenge not telling my suggestion some of the entrepreneur is to really create a uh, biogas plant based on either agricultural waste or cow dung or mix of both both feed are available and then i can give you the technology which will produce the bio cng and also the uh, compost that the best kind of compost is selling now almost 40 rupees 50 rupees per kg and bio cng market rate is 43 rupees per kg that is a government announced so anybody any anywhere uh, even even later I'll, i'll share with you uh, it is spcl i think they have advertised one uh, tender at their uh, 30 locations in their petrol pump they want to establish the bio cng dispensing unit okay. so great i mean the, i mean it's an energy sector petroleum is an energy sector which is i'll call it high density energy as compared to any other energy so high density energy sector is a really uh, high high liking sector okay okay uh another uh, guest of ours uh, is is mentioning that he has done mtech and want to make a career in oil and gas uh, is it possible uh, to make a career in this industry he is basically from a teaching background so he just want to like what kind of career opportunities are available for him is it possible uh, for him to make a move in this sector now okay so uh, as i am looking after over here uh, not only for that uh, the 
course coordinator. I'm also looking after as a pick placement in charge for the MB oil and gas guys. So I just mentioned you, please guys, first of all, not only the MTech in oil and gas sector, in petroleum sector, from any background, even a guy from a arts, even a guy from a commerce, even a guy from a computer background, even a guy from a civil in, uh, in, uh, civil engineering, even a guy from a diploma, those guys are also welcome because the opportunities are there, first of all. Second, please understand that the these types of opportunities may be different. If your uh, means, the packages are different, but the opportunities are there. OK, take an example. If somebody is from the uh, arts background and they are looking after for the HR. So in petroleum sector, the HSC guys, health, safety and environment are normally the HR guys who did their MBA in HR and then join or maybe the HR uh, courses and then join over there. So these types of opportunities are also there. Similarly, for a background like MTech, maybe MTech in any field or maybe in teaching background, Recently, from this uh, batch, if I discussed uh, a guy from uh, a girl from uh, this Pashim Bengal, and he's also an experience of four to seven years after the MTech completed the MBA oil and gas, she get placed in the consultancy called ENY. So the mm -hmm. guys who have an education background, please understand not only this particular core domain sectors, uh, if you are looking after, they are the opportunity in the market research. They are the opportunity in the consultancies. They are the opportunities in the, if you didn't get the domain company, please don't, that's not the problem. They are the opportunities for the these organizations also. So that's the huge opportunity if you are looking after for that. Okay. Uh, Professor Anirudh, another question is like which profile or role will be most demand in LNG market? Uh, sir will provide the answer for that. Okay. I think that <laughs> see the day I, I will take a clue from what you said earlier. Let me add up two, three more profile chartered accountant. Most wanted in the oil and gas sector. Uh, you, 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 it, it is hard to believe I was analyzing some organization. They have put the chartered accountant as the CEO of CGD, as the chairman of CGD company. So this is one area. Legal, very interesting. Law, so yes. then HRC, of course, you have already covered it. And trading, you have the trading course also. Now profile for LNG. Now it, it, it's it's if you if you really would normally we uh, understand with respect to technology only. It is not only technology. You need allied things. That the best today, if you want to have a LNG carrier, it's a trading. If you, if you know the you know sourcing, I mean, I was just telling, even you can uh, save uh, uh, one cent per million BTU in your contract if you are so good, and uh, one million ton only will save you half a million dollar, and half a million dollars is three and a half crores today. In today's time, this is the value of gas trading. If you are a good negotiator. You could be a legal man, you could be a finance man, you could be a trading man, you could be a technical man. One has, but then pure technology. Pure technologists, those who want to have, uh, the, the allergy is nothing but basically what you are teaching in MBA, oil and gas, or even the BTAC, uh, petroleum, applied petroleum, PDPU, yourself, and I think your uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi Institute, rivalry. They are all, I mean, the only three domain uh, universities we have. So uh, your technical people, marketing people and your legal people and trading. They are the main uh, which are there. But I, I was just collecting from data GSPC. There was a, you know, um, in, in during uh, um, the period of uh, pandemic, there were a lot of problems going here and there. So one of their chief, they sat in the office and started training. They are about 65 crores. So the, the question comes out, actually what you want, and you should be in your liking job. If it is your liking job, you can you can make your career anywhere in any discipline. Now, oil and gas is a very, very versatile area. There are all kinds of people required. It is not necessary that you have so strong domain knowledge. You can learn it, mm -hmm. but you should have professional knowledge. So I think uh, uh, Dr. Negi have already answered this question also because there is another guest, Ma uh, Mandarima. She has mentioned that she's from an IT field and she has around 50 years of uh, 15 years of experience in IT domain. So is there any uh, place for her? But I think you have already mentioned. Hot thing, like, hot thing. 
clash of their mind at heart. <laughs> <laughs> Today I am telling you, the people have changed, the lifestyle has changed and the demand has changed. Earlier we used to go, you know, your home to home, meter reading, then billing. Everything, you know, you call it smart meter, you prepaid meter. Technology is very, very, I mean, this is, this is a very, very desirable uh, profession if you go for digitization. Right. Uh, Dr. Ege, another question, like what with the impact of... Uh, uh, auto, on automobile industry uh, due to this alternative fuels? Uh, yes, it, it's actually it's a very, very important. Uh, there are different views from different corners. Uh, I, I will call it, there could be some biases because if, if I'm supporting CNG, I will say, no, no, electric vehicle is not good because after all, you are, you, are, you know, displacing those uh, environmentally bad elements elsewhere. If you are generating electricity, so the, the electricity generation point is emitting uh, methane, uh, emitting CO2, emitting uh, dust, and you are bringing, calling it clean energy. I mean, this, this is what they on record, they call it. But in my opinion, uh, all three will compete. All three will compete. Uh, they will have their own share, and you will, will compare with when the aviation sector was open to privatization. And incidentally, all the people grow. And, and uh, nobody lost the job, nobody lost the, uh, their market potential or market share. So uh, CNG, as we have said, uh, it, it is the best fuel in the sense it will be available for a long distance. Uh, electric vehicle has a problem of charging. Of course, there can, there can be quick charging processes going on. Battery swapping is their thinking to have. But battery itself is 60% cost of the vehicle, actually. So yeah. it, it, it may not. Initially, when we started CNG in India, way back in 1993 94 nobody was the taker a lot of, lot of even o omcs ioc bpc spc uh, sorry there must be people from them joining uh, they opposed it they say it, it is bad it is carcinogenic it is heat pro and it is it, this this is because it was impacting their business what we did is say you become the stakeholder of the movement so in all your uh, ro's or retail outlet we establish cng and you earn from this so similarly if you are a CNG dealer, please put your uh, battery charging also there. And why mm. not to have a provision for the uh, filling of hydrogen tomorrow? And, and, and also have a uh, filling of uh, LNG if there's a good station. So I say all four are the brothers and sisters of the same uh, family. Uh, we, we, should, we should take advantage of the growth, let it grow. And we should be able to um, make a cocktail for benefit of all of us. That, okay. That's what I feel. Every will, everything will grow, but rest assured, you can note down the CNG is not going to vanish at least 2040. Pakka, the 100%. Okay. No. Uh, another question uh, is that how digitization will enhance the growth of this sector? Two things. Yeah. One, uh, one there was a professor, you said, and tech uh, teacher. Uh, surprisingly, uh, I have. Uh, I have a, a vision that this sector is requiring a lot of uh, skill development. Okay. Uh, we have a shortage. All, all, all sector. The, the people are swapping. Somebody is picking from another company, doing another companies, uh, both from bottom, uh, ITIs, uh, engineers, senior management. A lot of, as I say, 60, 61 being allotted within next month. And everybody will go there, a lot of commitment. So it, the skill development is one of the very, very important where uh, we, we, we should find job in even IT to IT. I can imagine one side professor asked me to teach to PhD student. I become the external examination. Other side IT to IT. So we, we must have that range. You, if you really have that range, then then you are you are an institution. Then my MTech questionnaire who was talking about this, then you, you, you are not a professor, a faculty, you are an institution. You must have you increase your range, and that is what the sector needs now. Uh, skill development uh, that that is very very important. Uh, anything else? I think that's that's it, uh, uh, Doctor Negi. Uh, so far, uh, you can you can join uh, elaborate on digitalization. Yeah. So particularly uh, on the digitalization, please understand one more thing that in each sector, I already mentioned uh, that maybe upstream, midstream, or downstream. Why we mentioned digitalization? Basically, in 
every sector we are want to reduce the opex opex means operating cost we want to reduce because already the investment is there capital <coughs> uh, capex is already invested over there for that particular thing so until unless we don't do the digitalization we can't reduce that particular operating cost and if our operating cost is not reduced we can't expect that the price of the finished product will be there okay so that's why the most important part in the digitalization maybe in any uh, any field maybe in upstream midstream or downstream first major part is to reduce the operating cost and through that particular reduction of the operating cost we will get a cheaper price of products finished products for the market okay uh, thank you so much um, guess if we have any further questions we can ask as I think uh, Professor Anirudh and Dr. Nikki, uh, that's it from our side. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights and for answering all the questions of our guests patiently. I think they they are getting all the required information, uh, and it's such a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Thank you.